Okay, hello and welcome to another video of our uh, Matt Question Solution. Uh, this one was Matt 2011 Question 5. Uh, these ones tend to be, I believe it's the Question 5s, which tend to be like um, less kind of, less of a feeling of a pure maths question and more, here's a completely unfamiliar context. Can you apply the correct mathematics in this context? And we've got a funny little quirky robot who can only move up or right, yeah? Um, I suppose when I first read this question as well, I thought, can he, do, do they mean turn right, which would have made it a lot more complicated, but no, they literally just mean they can only move up, right, up, right, you know, you can move up, up, right, or right, right, up, they can do anything like that. Um, and they're calling a solution um, if you end up on one of the goal squares, which are the leading diagonals here, yeah? And we've got this semi-grid idea, which is like half, but not exactly half, because you can't you haven't cut those in half. But uh, yeah, we've got this idea of a semi-grid of size M. Now, what have we got here? So in the example, the robot is initially located here and the goal squares are shown in gray. Let us call a solution, a sequence of the robot's moves that leads the robot from the initial location to some goal square. Write down all state eight solutions for a robot on a semi-grid of size four. So my first thought was, I'm gonna let U equal one move up And naturally, R equal one move to the right. And then if a goal square is any of the gray ones shaded in, we've got, we could go up, up, up. That's fine. That would just go straight from here to here. We could go up, up, and then right. Bum, bum, bum. We could go up, right, up. Bum, bum, bum. Or we could go right, up, up. So we go bump, bump, bump. And now, you know, you think about it, there's only one way of getting to the top square here, but there's three ways to get into there because we could go dun, 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 and dun, dun, dun. And I'm sure you can see the pattern emerging here. You could also go two rights and an up in any order. So up, up, oh, sorry, two rights and an up. Um, let's put the two R's at the end first. Up, right, 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 up, right, and right, right, up. And lastly, you could go three rights to end up on the square on the right. And sure enough, we've got eight solutions. Now, what I was pleased about when I checked my answer at the end was they used exactly the same notation as me. That's always kind of like, oh, reassuring, you know, we've used the same sensible notation. Now, part two, devise a concise way of representing the possible journeys of the robot in a semi-grid of size N. In your notation, which of the journeys are solutions? So I'm pretty much going to follow what I did here. I'm going to say for an n-size grid, so for an n-size grid, 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 <laughs> we require all possible strings, all possible strings of letters R and U. R and U. Provided there are length n minus one. I'm just going to say provided there le the length of the string is n minus one. Then it will be a solution. Now, what am I saying here? Um, these ones are very wordy questions. And it will be a solution. So my concise way of representing the possible journeys is just using R and U, yeah? Um, and I know that if it's of size N, then we will need N minus one moves. And it doesn't matter actually whether we go up, 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 right, up, or whatever. Like as long as there's N minus one moves, just that was like three moves here for a semi-grid size four, you know, we could have had any, any, uh, string at provided of length three and it just has these two symbols u and r that that's perfect and they will all be solutions every single time okay part three a little bit more tricky now write down a formula for the number of possible solutions in a semi-grid of size n explain why the formula is correct so i'm sure you can see here because we're doing like three you know three moves three distinct moves 
and um, two to the power of three is eight. That's where they're getting the eight. The formula should be two to the power of m minus one. Now let's explain why that has to be the case. It's because each time you have a choice of two possibilities, U or R. You have two choices of what to do. U or R, up or right. So each time, you're going to, if you're going to count all the possible ways you could do something, like, and it must be of length n minus 1, then you'll need to do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 n minus 1 times. And that equals 2 to the power of n minus 1. Yeah? You're always going to need one less uh, move than the size of the grid. You might wonder why that is the case, actually. Well, can you see if this is of length n, and that's how our semi grid is defined, then you will need one less than n moves because that's one move, that's one move, that's one move. You're always going to need, you know, you need to get, if it's n, then you need to get to the first square, next square, and then the nth square. It's going to be one less than the width of n. Okay, so that's the first three answers. And I must admit, I didn't really see there was much to that. It seemed pretty straightforward, like so far, so good. It gets harder here, though. It gets harder in part two. Now, they're changing the problem slightly and redefining a goal square as any square that can be described as follows. Lower left square is not a goal square. Each square that is located immediately above or immediately to the right of a non-goal square is a goal square. And each square that is located immediately above or immediately to the right of a goal square is a non-goal square. Furthermore, let us assume that upon reaching a goal square, the robot may decide to stop or continue moving, provided there are more allowed moves. With these modifications in place, write down all the solutions in a semi-grid of size four and all the solutions of a semi-grid of size five. Well, let's just talk about what a goal square is now before we go any further. Um, what I'll need to do is just rub off some of the stuff I've got on here. Under their definition, they said this wasn't a goal square, but anything up and to the right will be a goal square. So that will be a goal square now, and that will be a goal square. But anything up and to the right of goal squares is non-goal square. So you end up with just diagonals on each even number, if you see what I mean. One, like if we call the diagonal rows one and three, they'll be non-goal squares, but two and four will be goal squares. And that's how our goal squares are going to work now under that definition, under that description. Um, so if I want to write down all the solutions of a semi-grid of size four, we're going to have all the ones we had last time. So U, 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 R, U. Sorry, let's, let's just very, very quickly write down exactly the same thing again. R, U, 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 R, 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 U, R, 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 U. And then finally, R, R, R. Check you've got eight there. Yep, we've got eight there. Um, or we could finish on the second diagonal as a goal square. There's two ways we can do that. You can move one to the right or one up. So, or U, or R. And so there's 10 solutions. Now, what about size five? This is size four. Now, what about size five? Well, it's going to be exactly the same, isn't it? Because when you make it size five, you don't have any more goal squares. You've just got these here and they're non-goal squares. That's a semi-grid size five. But there's no solutions on that because they're non-goal squares. So it's exactly the same as before. So all I'm going to write here is exactly the same as size four. And that's going to be the case for odd and even semi-grid sizes, the ones next to each other, the odd one, one above the even one, would have exactly the same solutions as size four. So you can get kind of up to here in this problem and think, well, I haven't really done much work yet. But remember, they never tell you how many aren't marks each part of the question is worth. And I think they did save a juicy amount of marks for part five, which would explain why this was a little bit more straightforward. So part five, how many solutions are there now in a semi-grid of size M where N is a positive integer? You may wish to consider separately the case where N is odd or N is even. That seems sensible. So let's say N is even first.
Okay, what have we got? Well, we're clearly doing two to the power of one plus two to the power of three plus two to the power of five, yeah? Because we'll be adding up one, then eight, then 32. And this really stems from our answer up here that there's two to the n minus one ways of getting to each diagonal of goal squares. Now, this is going to go up to the even number. If n is even, it's going to be one less than that because when n is even, the last one you do is one less than the even number. So if, if n is even, you know, n is four, the last thing we did to work out how to get to these goal squares was plus two cubed. Yeah, and so that's going to be one less than our even number. So I've got this, yeah. Now, it's important to note, though, how many terms are there in this sequence in terms of n? Well, as it turns out, there are n over two terms. And I think this is the most subtle part of the question in this sequence. Now, why are there n over two terms? Because if you think about it, um, and it's worth sort of like writing these down, when you've got n is four, you'll have two terms in your sequence. When you've got n is six, you'll have three terms in your sequence because you'll have to add the fives, the threes, and the ones. When you've got n is eight, you'll have four terms in your sequence because you'll have the what you know the ones, the threes, the fives, and the sevens. Yeah, and so we've only got half as many terms in that sequence as the value of n, and that's probably why where a lot of students will go wrong. Now, this is a geometric sequence. It's the sum of a geometric. They love putting that in this test. They really do. It only comes up more than once. So the first term is two. The common ratio is two squared or four. And the sum for n over two terms is going to be a times one minus r to the power of n over one minus r. And if we simplify that, we're going to get, um, let's turn those around, actually, because otherwise we end up with a negative on our top and a negative on the bottom. 2 times 2 to the 2n minus 1 over 4 minus 1, which is 3. So I get 2 thirds, 2 to the 2, oh, hang on, have I written n over 2 there? No, I haven't, because I've got to place not n in here, but n over 2. See, I'm doing it again. That is should be n over 2 terms. And you can see I've written n over 2 there to try and remind myself, but I failed miserably. So when I multiply that in, I'm actually just going to have a two to the n here. That's where you're likely to go wrong on this question if you did go wrong. Okay, and that's the result when n is even. Now let's say n is odd. What are we going to have then? Well, similarly, we're going to have two to the power of one plus two to the power of three plus two to the power of five dot, dot, dot all the way up to two to the n minus two. You see, when n is odd, think about the case when n is five, size five, you only go up to two cubed, don't you? That's the last one you add up, two cubed. And so you're actually going to do all the way up to n minus two. But once again, how many terms are there in this sequence in terms of n? Well, that's actually going to be n minus one over two terms. Think carefully here, because... Take the case where n was, you know, size five. N, remember, represents the size of the semi-grid. We only have to do two to the power of one plus two cubed. So in other words, we're doing two terms in our sequence when n is five. So we need to take away one from the odd number first to make it basically the same as this one, and then divide it by two. So we've got a is two again. R is now going to be two squared again. But we're summing n minus 1 over 2 terms. So that's going to be a times 1 minus r squared. Sorry, 1 minus r to the power of n minus 1 over 2 over 1 minus 2 squared. Let's switch it round again, though. You're going to get 2 times by 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 over 3. And that's the final answer. We've done it. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of a fiddle at the end there with counting the terms in the sequence. Be careful with that. That's the only thing I'd say about this question. I think it's the only bit where it gets a little bit difficult. But otherwise, it should be fine. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful and uh, keep up the hard work. Good luck in the exam.